Without the power of God behind everything I do, I really am completely inadequate. I'm helping the culture. These guys are these guys are part of us as well. You know, these guys are our, our cousin. I'm helping the culture. I'm I'm do, I'm pushing the culture forward in another way. Hey, Black Chow, be what you can be. Learn what you must learn. Do what you can do. And tomorrow. What do you do after you read? Oh. What do you do after you know all, right? And, you're, and you can say that you're truly conscious. How are you putting what you know into action? Hey, welcome. This is uh, the New Black History Makers show, and I am Jasmine, your host. Um, we are back with episode, I think it's... 17? It might be 18. I should have checked this before I got on live, but um, we're back with another episode. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can see that I am not alone. I'm joined by Simone. I'm saying Simone, right? Or correct me if I'm if I'm not. I prefer to say Simone. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> okay. okay. So yeah, so um, yeah, she's here. If you've been hearing some of the ads, Jazzy Sweets and Treats, this is the founder. So we have to have her come on um, to talk. She is also a mother. So we all know it's Mother's Day weekend. So we wanted to do a special episode for um, the mothers and just kind of talk to her about being uh, an entrepreneur and a mom and just all those things encompassing. So um, I'm excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm excited. Thank you for inviting me. This is a great opportunity. Yeah, I'm super excited. So we met um, because, as you guys know, with New Black History Makers, um, we have merchandise. And um, when we were doing more vending last year, um, I had vended at one of her events um, with Enlightened Lady. And it was one of the best events that I did, you know, for the year. So I did it again. But it was just a cool, um, it was a cool vibe. We were at the Lakewood Mall, for those of you guys who are familiar here in, like, Southern California, um, but it was all female um, ran businesses. So um, it was just a, a definitely a cool vibe. And then also the traffic that was coming, people were actually like willing to shop. I think maybe because they were going to the mall, they were like, we got some money so we can spend it or whatever. So um, it was definitely like a well put together event. So I was glad to be a part of that. But that's how we met just for context and stuff. So um, yeah, so shout out to you. And thank you also for allowing me to be at your event back last year yeah the end of last year it was pretty cool yeah my pleasure yeah i spent um majority of 2021 hosting um the enlight lady events i started out doing those events from doing vending myself i've had a couple mm -hmm. different businesses um originally i started out with jazzy sweets niece in 2013 that was right. my original love of been baking all of my life but after a spiritual awakening, I branched out and started doing also Crystal Healing for the Soul, my sister and I. Um, so I created um, Healing Crystal Jewelry. Okay. And that's how I got started with doing vending and then eventually creating my own event, event which was Enlightened Lady. Okay. Cool, cool. So before we get into... Um more about you because that's what this episode is about but um just gonna do a, a quick check-in so i know we talked a little bit offline about it but how are you doing i'm doing good and all things considered i'm doing good i'm just mostly i'm grateful okay. um yeah i had a, a big car accident where i was hit sitting at a red light where a car who was coming into the intersection someone made a left-hand turn into the car and that car in turn hit me. Wow. So, um, gratefully I was in a big heavy SUV, um, that I think really helped, help me, save me. I mean, other than that, of course, God was watching over me, yeah. but, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. I got out of the car and I walked over to the person that, that hit me to make sure that he was okay. So blessed and yeah. grateful. Yes, and thank you also for still agreeing to come on um, virtually and stuff. So definitely appreciate that. Um, but if you are new, and then also thank you for your response as well. If you are new to the show, um, and then also just for you, um, Simone, uh, we I asked the how are you question, but then also 
Um, I always tell you guys a story about me reading an article and it, it was saying that, um, you know, these we should not necessarily get away from asking how are you doing, but we're so conditioned to um, give a generic answer. And then even though when people come on here, they usually give me a real answer about how are you doing? But, you know, in passing, we'll be like, how are you? And it's natural. I'm good. And it's like, we could not be good, you know? So they were like, ask different questions. So um, we, I have a list of random questions that I ask um, guests whenever they come on along with the how are you. So the random question for this week is what were you most proud of this week? What am I most proud of this week? The thing I am most proud of this week is that I actually took this week to myself. Mm. And I did it fearlessly because as a mom, and a mom in business and as a single mom, um, there's always this stress of you got to grind, grind. Um, if I don't grind, I'm not earning money. If I'm not grinding, you know, I'm going to miss the ball on something else. But I said, no, this time I need to stick a pin in it, especially after having the car accident and really yeah. self care and nurture myself. So I give myself a pat on the back for that this week because in the past, I've not been kind to myself in that way. That's good. Yeah. And it's so interesting because usually the answers that come after that. So there's a variety of questions um, that I have that I pull from, but it it's almost always like a question about like self-realization, about realizing their boundaries or, you know, it was a moment where they said no or, to something and realize how like, you know, just good it was for them, you know, to, to say no or to have a boundary or to rest. You know, a lot of the questions are very much so like, how could you have showed yourself more grace or what are you proud of? Or what did you learn this week? Um, so I always love hearing the answer. So that's like, your answer is very much so in alignment with like, you know, everyone else is kind of, we're all trying to figure out how to be better towards ourselves. So I love that. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yes. Um, then let's also, you can, Go ahead and tell us a little bit more about yourself, um, just so that people can become acquainted with you. Well, about me, um, I am born and raised right here in Southern California. I'm an L.A. girl. I grew up in Inglewood and in South L.A. And um, like I said, I'm a single mom of, of three amazing kids. My oldest is 19 um, and the younger two are 11 and 10. Um, so my passion is baking. I mean, even though I've done a couple different businesses, um, baking has always been kind of in my heart and soul. I've been baking all of my life. Um, growing up, I didn't do a lot of extracurricular activities like a lot of kids did. I didn't do, you know, Girl Scouts or ballet, that, that type of thing. You know, I was raised by a single mom. And, you know, all that was not really possible, you know, to do. So one thing um, that my mom really let me explore was baking. So she allowed me just to get in the kitchen and mess things up. And um, that just grew my love of baking. I'm self-taught and pretty good at it, I'll say. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of carried me throughout my life. Uh, when I was 12, I started selling cookies in brown paper bags. So I've always kind of had an entrepreneurial spirit. Um, by career, I am a career um, public servant. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> For almost 20 years. Um, but, you know, my goal, my passion is to be able to work for myself so that um, I can create something not only for myself and for my kids to be able to pass on down to them, but also to be able to create things in the community, which is what I was working on doing with Enlightened Lady. Um, so just to be able to have freedom, you know, freedom to be able to express myself um, with who I am at my core, as opposed to grinding on the nine to five. I'm not knocking it, but a lot of us are there's so much more to us that we do not allow ourselves to express because we are stuck in that um, grind of, of feeling as if, you know, I have to stay on this nine to five. And so many people have told me, girl, you're crazy. What do you, what do you mean you're trying to work for yourself and have a business? Girl, you better stay with them benefits and, you know, all of that. But it's a limited mindset. 
right where um you believe that you cannot do it and, and we are unlimited beings we can do it so um that's a little bit about about me yes. um you know enlightened lady was was just my passion of wanting to create something in the community for ladies like myself who had businesses who are working moms um, but have a talent and a skill that they wanted to share with everyone. So I created an enlightened lady to have that platform um, for ladies to be able to come out and share um, their their crafts, um, you know, their businesses with the community and get some exposure. I love that. Yeah. And that's exactly what it was. It definitely was that. So let's, as far as being a mother, um, I know we, I asked you offline, but definitely tell us about um, your children or and, and you don't have to tell us about them, but how many you have. And then, um, yes, yeah, she is a mother, like I said earlier. Well, definitely. Um, like I said, my oldest is, is 19. I'm, I'm super, super proud of him. Um, he just graduated from uh, Northwest Lyman College up in um, Oroville, California. So he okay. he told me when he was in the 11th grade that he did not want to go to traditional college. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, my God, I've paid all these years for you to go to private high school and <laughs> prepare you to go to college. And my firstborn doesn't want to go to college. Um, so that was was kind of tough to take. But I honored you know, how he felt. Um, he wanted to to learn the trade of being an electrical lineman. So at 18, he completed completed a very difficult program and is embarking on his career. Mm. Um, and my two younger ones, a boy and a girl, um, they're 11 and 10. And, you know, as you can expect, <laughs> <laughs> they're full of energy and they're into, you know, their activities, basketball and, and anime and just living their happy lives. <laughs> I love that. Now, I at some point in this conversation want to also tap into the way or um, about how you, you know, navigated that with your son, because I think most parents have a perception of what their children are supposed to do or what they ha want their children, you know, to do. And then when the child comes in and it's like, you know, no, I don't want to go that way. It's like, Oh my God, like what? Like you're not going to go the traditional route or, you know, whatever. So I love that. So he's 19 now you said, or. He actually turns 19 this Sunday. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. On Mother's day. On Mother's yeah. day he'll be 19. Okay. So yeah, it was, it was difficult. I mean, he's, he's exceptionally, bright even his uh teachers at his high school were telling me like oh my god he's 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 the brightest kid in my class that's what his, his english teacher told me he was like i'm not just saying that he's the brightest kid um in my class you you have to make him go to college and i'm like but you i don't want to be that that mom yeah that forces my kid to do something that in his heart of hearts he really doesn't want to do Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, with my, my background, I understand that there are so many trades that are out there for young people to explore and really have sound careers. Right. Um, so I just, you know, made the decision to, to back him with that, um, because I knew it would be a good decision, you know, for, for him. And it's been awesome. I mean, I, I always tell him he's he's a golden magnet because it seems like whatever he sets out to do, he he does it. And I mean, he was in that program with men who were twice his age. Mm. Literally. So um, he did he did the darn thing. <laughs> well, shout out to you and him for getting through that and then also being able to, you know, navigate that in a healthy way, you know, because there's I'm sure kids that are on the other side of that that you know, are just sitting in school and they're like, I really don't want to be here. So or sitting in college and they really didn't want to be there. So to hear the success on the other side of kind of like letting the child also make his own decisions, I, you know, applaud you for that. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen it, I've seen it play out in a lot of families where a child has been forced to go to college or go to a particular college because um, you know, the family wanted the child to attend, you know, their alma mater or whatever the case is, and the kid is miserable. So it's like, why send a child off to do something that in their heart of hearts, they don't really want to do, and then end up in a situation where they're not performing 
or they're dealing with some other issues, some, um, you know, depression or some, you know, mental issues as yeah. a result of being forced to do something that they're not happy to do. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of times we're just forced in society, um, you know, to have this belief that we have to do things a certain way. And, and we don't, you know, so long as he is out here being um, productive, you know, he's, he's being a good citizen. He's, he's a, he's a great young man and he's handling his business. I mean, he loves video games just like any other um, (laughs) 18, 19 year old, but you know, he's, he's, he's a good kid. He knows when to put the video games to the side and get up and, you know, get up at four 30 in the morning and go handle his business. Right. Yeah. I love that. (laughs) I love that. So um, I'm assuming, or because you said his birthday is a Sunday. So you had him close to mother's day or on mother's day. How was that for your first child and it being, you know, on or (laughs) near mother's day? What was that experience like? Yeah, he, he was, he was born uh, mother's day weekend. And, um, yeah, it, it was quite, it was a treat. Yeah. Cause I was in labor with him. I swear for like two, two to three days and he was almost 10 pounds. So, wow. um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was almost 10 pounds and I birthed him naturally. And, um, he, he, he's been a joy. I mean, really, like I was just telling him, um, the other day that, like, I don't think he real like he's so modest and, and everybody that knows him, he's like a really chill um, kid. It takes a lot to like get him excited, you know? So I'm like, I don't think that you realize like what a big deal, like what you've accomplished, you know, for yourself at such a young age. But I told him, I said, when you came out of my womb, you were like that. Like he came out, he wasn't crying. And I remember laying there on the table, like something's wrong with my child. And they're not telling me what's wrong because how come he, he isn't crying? I mean, I didn't know it was my first, it's my first child. I'm like, isn't he supposed to be screaming, crying, wailing when he, when he came out? (laughs) But um, that's just him. And he's been that way his entire life. He's just very, very chill, very relaxed. I love that. And then how are the other two? Are they chill and relaxed or are they a little different? (laughs) Well, my middle baby, um, he's, he's 11. He's the polar opposite. Unknown. Yeah, he, he's the polar opposite. He came out screaming and hollering to the point where the doctor was like, what's wrong with your boy? He oh. won't stop. <laughs> he won't stop hollering. It, literally it's, it's that way. Now he's the loudest one in the house, but he's, he's a sweetheart. He's, he's so compassionate, such a warm giving child i mean he's just he's full of light so i mean all, really all of my kids are so i mean i could talk about that all day long of just being a proud, yes, <laughs> a proud mom yeah. um, over all three of my kids mm-hmm. and then how's the the youngest she um she's chill mm-hmm. jazzy actually my business jazzy sweets and eats is named for her um, her nickname is Jazzy. She's a lot like her older brother where, she, where she's chill. It, it takes a lot for her to get upset. But when she does, she's definitely defending herself. <laughs> she can be she can be feisty. OK. And then do the boys wonder why the business is named after her or are they kind of just like it's whatever? It's whatever. OK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's whatever. My my middle boy, his dad has a business that's, that's named for, for part of him. So he, he's OK. okay. <laughs> I like that. So then what was the process like um, when you were coming up with the name? Because baking was something that you had started before, of course, you had your daughter. So then, um, you know, deciding to put her name in this business, I feel like that's a very, um, you know, intentional thing, but it's also like lovely, right, for this business that you guys are, of course, going to put in or have been putting in a lot of effort for it to grow, for it to have her name on there. Like, what was your thought process behind that? Um, I always had wanted a daughter, you know, from when I was young, um, not knocking my boys, but even when, you know, the oldest was was born, I was I just I wanted a girl and I have this love for teaching baking also. So, um, yeah, Jazzy's was just my inspiration from her because I was hoping that one day 
um, it could be hers, you know, that she would want to take on Jazzy's. And as you would have it, she loves, she loves baking. And even when I had stopped um, doing Jazzy's for a little while, she kept telling me, mom, when I get older, I'm going to reopen Jazzy Sweets and it's going to be my business. <laughs> yeah. So she was already in line with it. Um, she's not quite to the age yet where she can really get in there with me and do a whole lot. But when I do have her interest, I teach her what I can. So she knows like the proper way of baking. I mean, because when I was young, I would just go in the kitchen and just start melting butter and throwing stuff together and be like, how come my cookies are so hard? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I love it. It sounds like she has the, at least the mind for the, to keep the business going for as a business owner. Right. So hopefully when she gets of age to like run it, then they'll, you know, be workers and all of that. So she'll just have to, you know, keep it going and be in charge and stuff. I will say all three of my kids definitely all have an entrepreneurial spirit. Even with, with my oldest, he's looking to embark upon his, you know, career also as a city servant. But, um, you know, he wants to go into real estate. He wants to have his own business. Um, he, he doesn't want to be working for someone else um, for the majority of his career. I mean, he's already talking about early retirement and what I'm going to do with my millions. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the younger two also have lots of different ideas of what they want to do also. I love that. So um, before we go on our break, we have a few minutes left, but um, I guess tell us a little bit, we'll definitely continue after the break, but tell us a little bit about um, Enlightened Lady. I know you mentioned um, some of your goals with that and why, um, but just like some of the different stuff that you guys were doing um, in the community. So with Enlightened Lady, um, I originally started out doing much smaller events until it expanded when we got over to... Um, the Lakewood, Lakewood Center. Um, the goal was really just to focus on women in business. Um, like I said, focus on women like myself who are grinding on nine to fives and, you know, slaving late. And that's slaving is not a good word, but um, <laughs> you know, the, the sacrifices that you make um, while you were trying to juggle so many hats by, you know, we do so much with trying to take care of ourselves, yeah. um, nurture our business. A lot of us, at especially in my age group now, are also nurturing parents, yeah. um, taking care of family members. You know, moms are typically the head of the household that's taking the lead and making sure everything runs smoothly. So um, Enlightened Lady was just, you know, my way of trying to create that space, a safe space and a really high vibe space. Um, I'm really into um, energy and just making sure everything is always a positive yeah. vibe. And I had been on the pop-up, the quote unquote pop-up scene for a while, um, my sister and I, and, and experienced a lot of different things where I was like, I don't know that I like this. <laughs> this is not feeling, you know, really good or feeling like something that I really want to be a part of. So yeah. that was one of my my reasons, too, for creating my own event, because I wanted people to be able to come and feel comfortable and feel welcome and appreciated for, yeah. for being there. So, um, you know, we ran a Lakewood for six months. It was a great opportunity because I mean I met so many different people you know people people like you so many different ladies that just so there's so much amazing talent out there that as small business owners a lot of us are just struggling to to be seen and to get our product out there yeah. I mean everything from you know ladies that are doing clothes to, you know, bakers like myself yeah. making amazing, even like these earrings that I have on shout out to, um, Lynn Brown that, um, she makes all of these earrings. I'm like really cool stuff. So it's to the point I, my daughter was asking me yesterday, mom, what's your favorite store? 
I know she was asking because they're trying to figure out what to get mom for Mother's Day. And I had to really like think about it. Like in the past, I would have said, oh, I like Macy's. I like Victoria's Secret, you know, something like that. But now from so many, you know, years of doing small events and, and hosting Enlightened Lady, like I don't shop in big, big shop right. stores yeah. anymore. Everything, most, most of everything that I purchase is from a small business. And I try to make sure that um, I support small business because there's a lot of great product out there and, and we yep. need the support. Right. So we let's need- hold on to that thought and then we'll come back with needing the support um, with these small businesses and also talking about some of these vendor events and stuff. We'll get back to that, but okay. enjoy these commercials. All righty, we are back. Thank you all for sticking with us during those commercials. Um, those are just some of the shows that are here on The Good News. If you are just now tuning in or if you are listening um, during the week, this is the New Black History Maker Show, and I'm your host, Jasmine Cates. We are celebrating mothers today, so I have Simone uh, with me, and we're just talking about her life as a mom, as an entrepreneur, um, and then, uh, of course, the stuff that she's doing in the community, and then also her um business and stuff so before we got off and went to commercials you were talking about um vending and then just some of the different spaces um and things just maybe not being I don't want to say comfortable but them not being easy to you know deal with and stuff and I I know for sure that's why I appreciate it um in like ladies because um it was one of the events where it was smooth, right? Or there was good energy. Like you said, you were putting that intention out there. So like the intention was definitely like met and manifested through um, the event because there's just so many times. And I think naturally we just, people get stressed out. And I think when they get stressed out, especially when it's an event day, um, their, you know, attitude is not the best and not that they're intentionally trying to be like attitudinal, but it's like, it just shows up. And then when you show up and you're like, I had to get my whole life together to bring my merch out and do whatever. So you're trying to have good energy because it's early. And then you're met with the attitude. It's like, wait, like, why do you have, you know, attitude or why aren't you here? Or why aren't things put together? Like I did my part. Why, why, haven't you did your part? So I definitely like can attest to that, that, um, you know, the vending world, I can't speak for anywhere else, but I know out here, the vending community out here for like LA is you are not always getting a good experience, um, from the perspective of being a vendor. So I just wanted to add on to that, but that's, that's true. I mean, that's true. That is what my sister and I were experiencing and, and not always, not always the case because we right. did work with um, 
a few, you know, really great organizers. Um, but yeah, that, that was my intention with doing Enlightened Ladies so that people could come and have a different experience. So I really uh, prided myself on making sure that when vendors came to, to work with me, um, it was a positive experience. And, and of course, you know, I, I did my best with trying to, you know, market the events and um, have as many quality vendors as I could, um, you know, to come in. But it, it was a lot. It, it was a lot. It was a lot of work um, because I was dealing with um, the behind the scenes dynamics of organizing the event and permitting and, you know, all of that. I don't want to speak too much, you know, on, on that. But, you know, it could be a lot um, because some of this, you, you're coming into a, a city, yeah. you're coming into a, a city that um, you have to deal with what their requirements are. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was really, really important to me, vendor experience. I kept saying that a lot, vendor experience. I wanted vendors to um, not just come and sell, but have a good time selling. You know, we would have live entertainment um, out there, live music, and, um, you know, food trucks on occasion, the food trucks were not organized by me. They were um, mandated by the mall. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, I think overall, for the most part, I mean, I, I did have some crazy situations um, of dealing dealing with that. But that's with any business. Right. You're, everything is not going to always be um roses. You're going to have some challenging situations and you're going to deal with some challenging people um, that will come up and present some situations that will will try to take you out of yourself. Yeah. But you have to stay grounded and um, just deal with it accordingly. So I learned a lot. I, I, I learned a lot from doing Enlightened Lady, just even just a general business standpoint, I mean, because I funded it enlightened lady um out of my own pocket okay wow so i mean that that's a lesson i learned like don't do that anymore <laughs> right yeah and i think we often we have to figure it out because i i know for me um just being an entrepreneur and i realized a few years ago so i come from entrepreneurs and y'all know i i mentioned it all the time but i come from preachers so them having to run you know the church or whatever and then a lot of the men in my family are um, truck drivers as well and they own their own business and then my mother owns a daycare so um mm -hmm. and then my grandmother at the church she owned a preschool so I realized like a few years ago I was like oh, I come from you know entrepreneurs and stuff but it looks different now you know and they were my parents and grandparents and my mother and grandmother are in child care uh which is a business that's always you know going to be around and then mm -hmm. my um my father and grandfather like my dad is uh into putting or works putting gas into gas, um, gas stations. And then, uh, my granddad, as far as like with buildings and freeways needing to be built, he's driving the gravel around. Right. So like two industries that are always going to be needed and, and need to be around. So for me to go into creating my own thing, it was, it's entrepreneur, but it's still very different because I need to prove to you why you need my product or why you need my service, um, compared to just, like, oh, okay, you know, we're putting together a business and I'm, I'm giving it to you. So it's always interesting, you know, seeing um, things as they've evolved. And that was kind of like, if you guys read the advertising for the episode, it's like, you know, we're picking unconventional ways to make money and to, you know, finance our, our ourselves. But learning, like you said, this is something now, you know, like, hey, I'm not going to put the bill for everything now. And, and there are a lot of resources out there now that will, you know, give you the funding mm -hmm. for it. So um, I think that's something if you guys are looking to go into a business, like be very mindful of that. And then also like ask questions, you know, and, and pe there's people that are trying to do what you're doing or something along those lines, maybe not the exact thing, but there's people like us who, you know, we've hit our head a few times and we realized, you know, like, <laughs> okay, well, this may not be the best way. Um, but I really love how you have kind of like pivoted, right? So um, not necessarily push. So is it that you're not going to do Enlightened Lady anymore? Is it just on the back burner for right now? What what kind of is like the synopsis? 
You know, honestly, um, I would love to do Enlightened Lady again. I just know going forward, I would definitely need more of a team to work with me. I didn't bring on an assistant with me until um, probably toward the end of me hosting the events at Lakewood Center, um, which I should have done that, you know, a lot sooner. So, you know, one thing, too, that <clears throat> we have to realize, you know, when we're starting out doing a business, um, because of financing, you know, you're you're doing everything yourself. Right. Um, but sometimes we do have to figure out a way to bring somebody on, you know, with you because right. you burn yourself out. And that's kind of where where I was, especially with working full time. I was burning out completely. I needed somebody else that could come in and um, take care, take care of some things with me. Yeah, I love that. So I'm, I, I think it's necessary to be mindful of when you need to pivot, right? And I love that um, you are still operating in this like entrepreneur um, spirit or just space. Because um, a lot of times people will feel like, oh, if that one thing, which was dope, like this idea that you had was dope, if it, it's not the season right now or if it's time to just maybe step away for a little bit, they're like, oh, you know, I, I can't do anything now or I'm not going to, you know, Put my effort into any capacity so um i love that there was more so of a pivot and not just like a i'm throwing this entrepreneur um way of life you know away i'm just gonna you know go um and do the nine to five and, and we were talking offline too how um being an entrepreneur is not always a full-time thing like it doesn't have to be your nine to five it, i mean of course we would hope that it can be but gradually as we're getting into these businesses and learning the ropes um especially if you do have children if you are a mom if you are a father or you have responsibilities um you know you're gonna have to like weigh it out and see like okay does this make sense financially so um yeah being the an entrepreneur it, we don't want to belittle anybody that, you know, is still working or uh, make it seem like that's mm -hmm. less of an, an entrepreneur or anything. So you de definitely are still in the category and a part of the conversation. Um, Cause I, I look at myself and I'm like the new black history makers, that's my nine to five. And I'm like, uh, I might, you know, I may have be a little more comfortable if I had something that was a little <laughs> more consistent or didn't take me getting up every day to make sure that the business was making money, you know? So there's pros and cons for sure, but um, entrepreneur looks different for everybody. Um, and it, especially for uh, mothers for sure. So that's, you know, why we, I really wanted to have this conversation. Well, definitely. I mean, we can't have a romanticized idea of what being an entrepreneur is, especially if you are working full time and trying to make that transition and, and and like you said it's it's no um no knocking to you know anyone that is doing a nine to five or someone that's doing a nine to five and and doing their side business at the same time so we all have to figure out when it is the best time for us to make that exit you know from your nine to five and, and do your your full-time hustle um you know the only thing i would say to that is there's so many resources out here for us. And I think a lot of times we are clouded by that romanticized idea that, um, yeah, I can do this, you know, it, it's okay. But there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. Um, you know, funding your business and uh, marketing your business. It, it just, for, for a lot of us, it is not just as, as simple as I put this on social media and it's just going to pop. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of just behind the scenes work. And I think a lot of our businesses too struggle with that. We got to be legit. Yeah. <laughs> we have to be legit and being legit in, in, in your business takes a lot of funding too, to make sure that you are protected by being an LLC or however you're going to be structured, you yeah. know, that you have insurance in place for your business, um, you know, it, it can be a lot, but there's there's a lot of like, you know, the Small Business Association. There's so much information, low cost information or even free information, um, you know, on, on things like YouTube where you can, um, you know, get a lot of your your questions, get a lot of information um, yeah. out there to, to strengthen your position as a business. Yeah. So and then along too with just networking and supporting each other. Because yeah. none of us knows it all, you know, so um, 
you know, for us to be open with each other, to not feel uncomfortable to share that information um, with the next person, because no one can take anyone away. No one can take anything away from you right. and your business. I mean, I've networked with with other bakers. You know, my product stands stands on its own. Nobody can take anything away from that. Yeah. Um, much as uh, another baker. And a lot of times people are, it's, they're buying your products because they like your product. It's good, but they're also purchasing from you mm-hmm. because they like you. They resonate with something, something going on with you right. um, and they want to support you. They like your, your vision, that type of thing. So um, I've never been the person to, to worry about, Oh, if I share this information, um, you know, she may steal my recipe or, or she may yeah. steal my client or, there's no room for that. We just need to support yeah. support each other and, and trust and know there's enough business out here for, for all of us. And yeah. God got my back. <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of every day. Um, yeah, I love that you br- bring that up. And it's interesting because last episode we had Kamari Carter Hawkins on and she's a poet. Um, and she had brought up, you know, um, I had posted the clip too. So if you guys didn't watch, you can go and um, see it on our Instagram. But she was just like, why do we um, as black people feel like, you know, because one person is doing something that oh, we can't do it or we'll get an idea about something and be like, oh, but there's so many people, you know, that do that or we'll make somebody feel like, oh, well, you can't do that because there's so many or why would you go into a saturated business, you know, and I think it's really important, even for me, like with new black history makers, um, I would like to think that I embody that myself. And and that's why, you know, the brand is able to push and, and do what it's able to do, because you're able to see like that example of the new black history maker, you know, in myself. So it's an identity thing and you have to find who you are and what you can offer the world um, or offer your community. And, and that's what you sell. I had seen... Um, somebody there, a a pretty successful business owner, but they were saying, you're not selling your product, you're selling um, the need, basically. So you're selling, or you're selling the the solution that you provide for an issue, um, but you're not necessarily selling, um, you know, the product. Like, of course, there's a price tag attached to that, but even like, you know, what are, what is it that you're giving to people or what is your food or your product, your shirts, how do they make people feel? That's what people are exchanging their dollars for. Um, And that's why they come back because, you know, they can get a shirt from anywhere. They can get cookies from anywhere. But if you make them feel a way um, and if they're good, right. And if it it might say something cool on the shirt or whatever, they'll come back. But um, Mm -hmm. it's interesting because, you know, she spoke to that last week that like, you know, be yourself. And if Mm -hmm. something was put on your mind to do or to accomplish, out there and accomplish it like it doesn't matter who's been doing it or who hasn't done it um it was put on you know your heart to do it for a reason so um i think that's kind of like the a recurrent theme for sure so absolutely i mean and i experienced that my first go round of doing jazzy sweets and eats um i sought some um some consulting and you know, the gentleman looked at me and said, okay, you got cookies and brownies. What's so special about it? Like he just, he wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> he, he really just didn't want to, he didn't want to support me um, because he felt as if it just, you know, hey, the market is saturated with cookies and brownies. What makes yours, um, you know, so special? So um, luckily that did not discourage me. Um, so definitely you have to believe in your product, but um, we also have to not have that fear of showing ourselves. And then I'll, I'll say that Enlightened Lady, um, that experience definitely is something that prepared me for where I'm at right now, because there was a time like for me to be alive sitting here with you and not mm-hmm. have butterflies in my stomach to be able to sit here and talk to. I know my friends are laughing about this right now, but <laughs> For me to be able to sit here and and comfortably talk to you would be like, oh my god, no, I can't do that. It's no big deal. We we just have to start somewhere and and be comfortable, to, like you said, to be yourself and show yourself. And it, you know, it makes more interest. Like, oh, who, what does what does she make? Right. Let me let me check it out. Yeah. So really, sometimes it, it doesn't have to be the best cookies and brownies. But because people like you, they will still, you know, support right. you. Now, I'm not saying that to say that because <laughs> my stuff is not good because it it is. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Because, I mean, there's so many, there's so many things. And and we don't have all the same taste buds. So there's cookies that, and, and desserts that people love. And I don't like them. And I'm sure you, you know, we all have different things that we like. So that's another thing just to encourage, you know, people like, just because it is saturated or because there are a lot of people doing it doesn't mean that there's not going to be someone that specifically likes what you offer and what you bring to the table. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, just a thing to take, but I do want to switch gears a little bit back over to like the motherhood side. Well, let's bring them both together, but balancing basically, you know, having three children um, and, you know, having these businesses, especially coming off of and like lady and what year that year that, you know, you had with that, what would be your, like, you know, your keys to balancing and kind of just navigating through being a mom and entrepreneur as well. Just that balance, everything has to be um, a balance and it, it starts, starts with you. I mean, that's, that's been my biggest um, lesson really over the last couple of years. It keeps returning to me, just, um, you know, self-love, um, self-love, prioritizing yourself and understanding that while you are a mom, while you are the breadwinner, while you are um, an entrepreneur, you still have to keep yourself on the list and prioritize yourself. Otherwise, nothing else is going to flow in your life. Right. So um, th that is my that that's my biggest takeaway. Um, the only thing is that sometimes it just when you're in the thick of it, it doesn't feel as simplistically as as simplistic as I just said it, um, because you're balancing so much. You've got so much on your plate with, you know, taking care of kids and homework and, and the house and just day to day responsibilities. Um, it, it can be a lot, but you, but you just have to know when to um, not overwork yourself to the point, because sometimes we're doing it just because it's what we've learned. We don't know any better, uh, you know, especially. Um, for us culturally, we, we know that um, there's this idea out there that is hustle, hustle. I'm not going to accomplish anything unless I hustle, hustle. Yeah. So, yes, we must work hard because how else do we get things accomplished? But we also have to balance that out with taking care of ourselves and also trusting that there's a higher power that is guiding us through the process. Yeah. Too, that it isn't just all you to make things happen. So, um, you know, it's like, yes, I was doing the events or, you know, like now I'm doing the, doing the baking. Um, but it isn't all me. It's not all me. It's, you know, divine, divine intervention that also is, is helping me. And we have to trust, we have to trust that. Yeah. So, um, knowing when it's time to stick a pin in it, you know, like I had to say for myself this week, like, Hey, I've had a a car accident and yep, there are some business opportunities that I, sh you know, start to think like I should be chasing this this week, but what's for me is going to be there for me. It'll still be there yeah. for me come next week, even if right. I stop and take this break. So, I mean, I know for some people who are a little bit more, their businesses may be structured a little bit differently. You can't always just be like, stick a pin in it. Oh, you know, I'm just going to take a week off and it, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't, doesn't work that way, but we, we have to find, um, create that balance for ourselves to where we are like this go around. I told myself, okay, certain days of the week, I'm, I'm not writing anything into my schedule. So yeah. like the beginning of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, those are no big days. Those are days that are dedicated to myself, dedicated yeah. to my household, to my kids mm -hmm. um, and doing things, you know, that are nurturing for myself. Um, and then the rest of the, those days, OK, I grind on business. So it's just like having that awareness that, you know, that you need that. And if you don't, you're going to end up resenting your business. Yeah. being really unhappy yourself because you've put so much out and you've not put in for yourself. So um, that, um, like I said, it, it's not the easiest thing. And, and, you know, I talk to a lot of ladies, a lot of women that are in business, and we will come up with so many different 
um, reasons as to why we cannot do that. But um, it, I really believe it's just it's just a wiring of um, society, especially for black women, too. I mean, I'll just yeah. put it out there and, and be honest, especially for, for black women that um, like sometimes we're viewed as is you know, we are the workhorse. I mean, I even had an elder who told me that, you know, one day, you know, hey, it's just, could just be your lot in life that um, that that you carry the load of everything. And, and I said, no, I rebuke that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I rebuke that. I, I don't believe that um, it's just supposed to be my lot in life to take care of everyone else and not um, nurture myself because that's how so many of us are um at an early age we are getting sick um you know we're stressed uh, we're dealing with yeah. a lot of things that um it's taking it's taking us out of here so we we really um and it's boundaries too because you know sometimes we're in situations where um, we have people in our lives or around us that are not supporting us in a way that we need so yeah. we have to know when to draw the line to say, you know what, this is not in my greatest and highest good, even when it comes, because sometimes that can be family. Sometimes that yeah. can be a partner. It could be, you know, a spouse, um, you know, that best friend that you've had for, for so many years. Right. You have to keep yourself prioritized on that list and, and saying no to situations that are, are not good for you and that do not nurture you taking care of yourself. Um, because when you don't, it just it trickles into every other area of your life, including your business and including your kids. You know, and that's one of my you know reasons overall too of, of wanting to you know continue entrepreneurship so that I can be present for my kids in a way that they need. Because we only get one shot at this. Yeah. Yeah. My oldest is nineteen. I mean, we're about to be nineteen. He'll be gone off doing you know his thing. And, you know, the younger two of those years go by so fast. You don't want as a parent to look back and be like, oh, man, I wish I had taken more time off of work or did things differently or pursued that business. Yeah. Um, you know, so that I would have had more flexibility and freedom to um, be more present for my kids. Yeah, that's good. I, I mean, everything. And I'm definitely realizing, like, you know, a lot of the stuff that you're saying is applicable to just life in general. You know, I love how you were like um, keeping yourself on the list. I think um, even if we're just talking about the entrepreneur side or just being a business owner, I, our, our list um, consists of so much, you know, and I can imagine what that list would, would be like having people that you have to take care of, like actual humans. So um, keeping yourself <laughs> on the list and like you were saying, you know, the self-care pieces or, being mindful of yourself, you know, and, and also um, I love how you just said like the whole thing about, um, you know, it's not just you like they're they're you know, God essentially is, you know, this guiding factor and, and it's not just on you and, and you have to also trust that there is um, a divine like way for your life. There's a, a way that, you, you know, your life is going to go and it's the you know, it's not meant to take you down a negative road. So just being intentional with like how you're moving and, and not feeling like it's all on you to make your life successful. Like there are, you know, resting sometimes even in rest, um, you know, success happens or you're able to recharge and get stuff, you know, back situated. So I love that. I, I, you know, think that's definitely something like we can all uh, take and like add to our lives, but we're getting ready to go on another break in about a minute. Um, and then you can give us the Instagram. If you've watched before, you've heard it. But um, let us know where we can follow you and get some sweets and stuff before we go on our break. Oh, absolutely. So I am online. Um, our website is live. It's Jazzy's Sweets and Eat. And Sweets and Eats and that Jazzy's is J-A-S-S-Y, no Z's. Um, and I'm also on Instagram um, at Jazzy Sweets and Eats as well. So we do local delivery. We ship nationwide um, and we have pickup by appointment. OK, great. Yeah, I love that. So definitely tap in. We're getting ready to go on our last break. Um, stay tuned to some of these commercials um, and we'll be back in about three minutes.
seriously. Your discretion is advised. Hey, Mikael, that's a dope ass shirt. What is that? You know what it is. I only rock the Flyers gear, and the Flyers gear can be found with TGN Radio. Where did you get it? TGNRadio.net. Go onto the page, click TGN Shop Store, and you can get everything you need. I'm getting mine right now. Make sure y'all do the same. Go get your TGN merch. Enjoy your show. Hey, everybody, I'm Jaja, your local health professional and wellness coach looking to help you build health, wealth, and community. Call me, text me at 951-569-8296 or find me at underscore JZA, JZA on Instagram. What's going on, everyone? This is Mark Cook's financial strategist and retirement expert. I am here to satisfy your financial needs when it comes to life insurance, retirement planning, and debt settlement. So please give me a call at 323-800-7621 or hit me up on Instagram at blacksuperman underscore AMC. Let's schedule an appointment today. Hey there, business owners. Don't miss our limited time offer. Advertise on the Good News Radio as low as $2 per commercial slot. That's right. Promote your business up to four times a day, every day for a month on live radio. If you're interested, email us at contact at tgnradio.net. Once again, that's contact at tgnradio.net. Oye, locos. We are back. Um, this is the new Black History Makers show on the Good News Network. Um, we are talking about, well, celebrating Mother's Day. Um, this episode is called Mompreneur. So being a mom and an entrepreneur. So we're just having conversations um, about boundaries. We talked a little bit about what Simone is doing in the community. And um, yeah, we talked about her kids and just her experience as a mother and all of those things. So it's been definitely a good conversation. So if you are just now tuning in or if you're hearing it um, during the week on the replays, definitely go back and you can go to TGN Talk on YouTube and type in New Black History Makers and it'll pop right back up. And then also um, we have a lot of good um, other good conversations that we've uh, put out before. So um, we've talked about the necessity of the Black church or whether or not the Black church is necessary in 2022. Um, we've talked about being single. We talked about mental health with Black men, with women. We've talked about the importance or the impact that HBCUs and, you know, the Divine Nine has had on the Black community. So um, definitely go back and search through some of our episodes and, and go watch some of them and share them with some people. But let's get back to the conversation. So more along the lines of being a mother, what do you feel like are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned um, in motherhood? Oh, we the biggest lessons that I've learned in, in motherhood, um, honoring your kids. I mean, that, that I would say that's one of my one of my biggest things. Um, it's like, you know, our kids are, are not here just because you birth them. They are not here for us to control. Yeah. Um, or for us to just put the, the fear of God in them as as a lot of people um, believe. Um, you know, they are individuals with their own, you know, personalities and a lot of things going on. And um, just as much as we want to be respected um, and considered, we have to give that same love and attention to our kids, because otherwise, um, you know, once they get to be adults, they're going to be dealing with some heavy issues that um, have originated in childhood that could have been avoided. So not knocking anyone. I mean, because as parents, we all do the best that we can, yeah. um, you know, with our kids. Um, so I just try to think if, if there's anything that I could do, um, just learning from my own childhood of how I can, um, you know, nurture them for them to be strong, balanced, um, loving individuals um, in adulthood, then that's what I'm here for, you know, as their, as their mom. It's, it's not just about, um, you know, are you groomed? Did you do your homework? Yeah. Um, is your room clean? You know, they need so much more from us, especially now. 
Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's especially now kids are dealing with so, so much and, and coming out of COVID too, um, you know, created like a lot of anxiety in, in my kids. Um, so it's like just being present, being present because, you know, people are, are dealing with a, a lot of stuff. So you're talking about, you know, parent, my, not just mom, but, you know, parents that are entrepreneurs or, or working, we're trying to deal with, um, you know, making sure there's the necessities are are met and dealing with your own junk sometimes. But you have to put that to the side and be there, you know, for their kids, because like I, like I said earlier, um, and it's always been my belief system, we get one shot at this with our kids. You know, they're going to they're going to grow up so you know, fast that um, we will not be able to reverse the time and be like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, that I didn't give you what you needed or, um, you know, that that type of thing. It, the damage will already be done. Right. right. And how is it navigating that, I guess, as a, because we see it now, right, where there's a lot of people that are like, oh my, I have to heal from the things that my parents, you know, did. So, what navigating that like as a mom and kind of being like well okay well I, like even I love the example of you being like okay well let me not you know be a, a stickler with your life but let me allow you to make your decisions um is that kind of just how your normal like baseline is operating with them or um how do you just kind of navigate that not trying not to be the thing that they would you know need to heal from or you know if that makes sense um, I mean, I, um, I dealt with a lot of different, you know, dynamics, you know, growing up as a kid from, you know, my parents being married, you know, being in a toxic relationship, mm -hmm. um, that affected my sister and I, um, greatly. So there was a lot of stuff, um, for me, you know, that, that came up in adulthood. Um, you know, I'll say after, um, you know, my marriage, I went through a depression for at least about a year um, where it, it's like life as I knew it was like, you know, kind of crumbled. <laughs> Everything kind of crumbled, um, you know, around me. And, um, you know, those were big lessons for me, too. It's like everything kind of came up to the surface for me to be able to look at and see, you know, for myself of, um, the things that I needed to heal from. So I think with me making those realizations, um, you know, with myself and doing the work to heal from that, you know, myself helped me strengthen as a parent also. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying all that to say that I'm perfect because no one is, right. um, you know, I'm sure there will be things that my kids will look back at one day and say, mom, we really didn't like it when you did X, Y, and Z, or mom, you made me feel like, X, Y, and Z when you did or said this. I mean, even my, um, you know, my 11 year old, he, he told me a couple weeks back, mom, you, he, he basically told me, you overwhelm me. You tell me to do too many things at one time. So, I mean, kudos for him being 11 years old to be able yeah. to speak up for himself, to call me out on my stuff, to say, mm -hmm. mom, it's too much. You know, but I'm sure we can all re can all relate to sometimes, you know, when mom gets in that zone and you come into the house and, you yeah. know, there's hot pocket trash on the table and book bag over here. And and, you know, he let me know I need to slow down. Mm -hmm. It's too much. It's too much for for him, for me to be telling him, you know, rattling off 10 things at one time. And he mm -hmm. maybe he caught the first two or three. Right. So, um, you know, our kids have a beautiful way too of of growing us also. So, I mean, yes, it's been a lot for me that's come up, you know, to the to, to the surface for me to heal, you know, from my own my own history, my own junk. But our kids also have a beautiful way of in a really loving way of um, showing us where we need to strengthen to as parents. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is so good. And you mentioned, you know, growing up and stuff. So um, I want to kind of highlight or get your perspective on the generational thing. So 
whether it be your mom or women that you saw growing up in your community or your aunts and stuff, like how do you feel like your life and the way that you're navigating is different from kind of like the generation before as Ooh. it relates to like motherhood and working and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's a loaded topic, you know, mm-hmm. right there. Um, you know, growing up for me, um, you know, total transparency and honesty, you know, it was tough. Um, you know, it was tough. I, I grew up with a mom who was who was severely depressed um, growing up. I mean, she she was she was a great mom. You know, she she loved us completely. Um, but, you know, she just had a lot of stuff. She had a lot of trauma that she was dealing with. And she was in um, an unhappy marriage an, un, an unhappy situation in which she was, um, you know, disrespected in a lot of ways. So, I mean, here she ended up being a, a single mom. Um, you know, with two, with two daughters and um, she had a difficult time navigating. So um, I learned a lot, you know, from her, Um, both my sister and I did of, of ways of things that we just knew we wanted to do differently. So, um, you know, it's, it's not everyone's story. It's not always roses, Um, you know, but definitely, the generation, you know, before me, um, I'm a lot more of a a go getter, and and I think um, for a lot of us too, you know, we're talking about generational generational gaps for for some for some of our families. I know for my mom, she was she was raised to be, um, you get married, you get married, and you know. You're the housewife. And for some people that did not, that didn't work out. Right. So, um, you know, my sister and I took away from that, that um, be married. That's great. But you also need to be independent at the same time to be able to support yourself. Now, while I do believe that there is a fine balance um, to that between, you know, male and female in, you know, relationships of still being in that, um, your divine feminine place to where you are not exerting too much. This is a whole nother topic, but since, since we're oh, here, good. <laughs> yeah, you're good. you are not exerting so much masculine energy that you are out of balance with your, your partner. Because that happens a lot of times when, you know, the female is coming with too much masculine energy and yeah. the masculine needs to be the masculine. But yeah. you guys are neutralizing each other because yeah. um, the woman is having to. Either she's having to because of the dynamics of the relationship or she doesn't know any better, because yeah. a lot of times because of our traumas and because of the situations that we've been through we are in this masculine energy because we're putting a shield up to, to protect ourselves um, because we're afraid of being hurt um, or we have been hurt in the past and we don't know how to soften um, as the woman. So I know I went into a whole other. <laughs> no, I mean, it's good. I, I, like I said, these conversations on here are very like free flowing. So, um, you know, I, you're good. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's so necessary because I think sometimes as women and then especially um, there was an episode that we had did um, with and it was um, being single. I forgot what the title was, but it was a few months ago and uh, it was me and then another black woman on and then a black guy. And he was like, all right, y'all, like, I, I want to say something, but don't like jump down my throat. And he was like, um, he's noticed that black women that are business owners, right? And and it's a lot of us right now. Um, he was like, it's hard to sometimes speak to you guys or it's hard to sometimes get that like feminine aspect, you know, from you guys. And he was like, it's not a negative thing. Like I love seeing you guys thrive and stuff, but when it's in a more intimate space and not necessarily only romantic, but even in a platonic, you know, intimate setting with a friend, he was just like, Y'all be like, can't nobody tell y'all nothing and whatever. And he's like, I'm not trying to do a business deal with you right now. You know, I'm just trying to enjoy some time with you. So I think it's something that, you know, we don't have to go and say like, oh, well, we're, you know, being a business owner is making us negative. But I think like what you said, like 
yes, being a business owner sometimes calls for masculine energy in a lot more spaces. And I think because we have to perpetuate it so often, it's so hard to turn off, you know, or sometimes we don't feel like we're in a space where we can turn it off because we bring up masculine energy to protect ourselves, right? Or if we're doing business to make sure people know, like, don't play with me or my business is successful or whatever. So um, to turn it off in certain spaces, it may not feel, you know, the most comfortable or we may not feel like, okay, this is a space where I can be um, completely vulnerable. So I love that you brought that up because it's something we have to look at, but it's not a simple fix of like, okay, no more masculine energy or yes, over here. Um, It's, you have to figure out in what spaces is it allowed? Um, And then I think, like you said, as we're dealing with men or in dating or in relationships or even with your children, um, not yours, but just children in general, even, you know, with my brothers, um, whether you have kids or you just have kids around you, you have to be mindful of like, how are you being? Are you, are you, can you, you know, tap into that softer side? So I think that's a really good conversation. That's, yeah, we, we you know, don't have it often. It's a big topic. It's yeah. a big topic that I would, would love to see, you know, see it talked about a, a lot more, um, you know, because everybody, you know, male and female, we both have masculine and feminine aspects to us. But, um, you know, we're seeing a lot right now um, where a lot of us have had to be in those masculine shoes more than what we have to simply because of the circumstances that we're in. But once we have that awareness of it, um, you know, it's it's up to us to be able to to dig in and do the healing because really that's, that's what it amounts to is, is you really have to um, allow yourself that time to kind of soften and heal and just give yourself a lot of, you know, forgiveness. Yeah. Um, to really, uh, cause you know, I see a lot of times too, it's like, we know that we need to do the healing, but a lot of times it's, it's too painful. Mm. it's too painful for people to really want to even peel back those layers yeah. um, to really dig in to say, okay, why am I like this? You know, why am I um, so guarded um, to where you're not having that softer side? So really in order for us to have relationships that are thriving um, and are har- harmonious, um, that comes from us being in that feminine softer side. Um, because while, you know, men do want independent women, they also do want a softer woman. And when I say softer, I don't mean, um, in regards to you can be run over, um, you know, we're still exercising strong boundaries and we're still speaking up for ourselves. but, um, you know, we're not pushing, uh, we're not disrespecting, you know, and, you know, there's so many ways of where we could go, you know, in this, in this conversation, but yes, definitely as far as being a woman is concerned and a woman in business, we have to know when we, um, we have to balance out being assertive and being in those business shoes when we need to, when we have to handle business and knowing when to turn it off yeah, or soften it. So, yeah. you know, cause a lot of us, um, we're in that whole, that whole, I've, I've even tried to like, remove hustle i've tried to just like take Mm. out of my vocabulary of of saying that because there's this whole just the the badass you know Mm. hustle woman you know and we hustling ourselves right out of being in relationships you know with that type of (laughs) right and i i think that's so valid um and i want to continue this conversation but before we do there's comments so shout out to Jada, the podcast, the show that is on Tuesdays at 4 30. Are they? Yes, I think so. Um, so shout out to y'all for being in the comments. They put the fire emoji. I'm pretty sure I know. Uh I'm pretty sure they're enjoying this conversation because it's two guys. So they're often talking about um like how you know men basically can be served a little more or how we could be more mindful of um the way that we speak or that this conversation of being softer, you know? So um, I think it's a twofold thing. So I'm sure that whoever um, it is that's watching from that podcast is enjoying it. But then also from Facebook, um, Tisha Tracy is watching. Shout out to you. Thank you for your comments. And then uh, DJ Gamray, he's a 
someone who watches all the time. So thank you all for watching. Please share um, this episode on your page or however you are. Um, but yeah, they said it's 4.30 p.m. So yeah, um, if you're not familiar with the good news, there's, I believe, over, I'll say around 15 to 20, maybe a little more, a little less shows on the network. Um, they are, I, I believe we're all, I'll say people of color. People of color is not a term that I necessarily identify with, but there definitely are um, not only black people that are on this network. Um, you know, there's some other races as well, but it's a really dope thing. There's a lot of different content that, that happens. Not everything is like my, I think um, my show may be one of the only ones like this. Mine and uh, Jada's is pretty, you know, similar to, so, um, but yeah, so um definitely tune in to some of them and you can download the app so the app is the good news radio network app i believe and you can go on there and just kind of like scroll through um what's cool now is for the past month we've been um shout out to keith because he it's a um 24 hour broadcast basically so um you're hearing me now and i'm live um but they're so that and i'm done at five and at five another show will be on it may be a replay or it may be someone that is live as well so um the same way you listen to 102.3 or 105.9 and when you tap in there's something that's always playing um it's the same thing here with the good news so um that has been a, a good um addition to you know the work that that's happening here so um yeah but back to um this conversation i think it's necessary, I think, even as it relates to mothers. I know as a, a daughter, I don't, well, if my mom is watching this, whatever, we've had conversations. Me and my mom had a, a tough, you know, we was tussling when I was growing up. It was it was <laughs> a lot, you know. So um, I was also her first daughter, her, her only daughter, and then my grandmother only had her. So um, that was their relationship. And, you know, my uncles would say, like, you know, their relationship wasn't the best either. And my grandmother passed away um, when I was in elementary. So... Um, you know, it was, it was an interesting time for me and my mom. We have a good relationship, a really good relationship now. But, um, you know, I think about that, like, what if there would have been conversations about, oh, okay, well, can you be a little, you know, softer in these spaces, you know, with your daughter, or can you be a little more, um, nurturing instead of feeling like, you know, your daughter has to be perfect or you have to get everything right, or she has to get everything right. So, um, you know, it's interesting hearing it on the other side of like with you being a mother and stuff and, um, you know, implementing these things or just thinking about it as it relates to how you were brought up now being on the other side and you raising, you know, your children. So it's a, it's interesting, but it's great to hear. I'm, I'm definitely enjoying it. Thank you. Yeah. It's, um, that's a lot to be said. I mean, I know with, with having a daughter, I, I wanted a daughter. Um, and I know growing up, I was forced to do a lot of things. I was forced to um, look a certain way, um, dress a certain way. And I know, you know, for my, for my daughter, you know, I've been criticized over how come you let her wear X, Y, and Z. Okay. Well, that's, that's what she likes. That's how she, she feels comfortable. Yeah. Um, expressing herself that way. She doesn't have to put on a dress, you know, for this event, you know, type of thing. So yeah. um, just finding the balance with that. You know, like I said, none of us do this perfectly. Um, just like our, our moms and our grandmothers, we we know that they loved us to, yeah. to absolute death. And we only do, we only do what we know. Yeah. No, for sure. I love that. So we have just under five minutes. So I definitely am so grateful for this conversation and grateful that you have come on um, to the show. This was a really good conversation and I can't wait to share it and all of that. But before we go, um, if there's just any like parting words, whether it be for entrepreneurs or for mothers or for both um, that you would like to leave just with people as we close out. Um, you know, I would definitely say just, you know, for all the moms that are out there, um, just moms in general. You don't even have to be a, a mompreneur or somebody that's working. Yeah. You could be, you know, a stay-at-home mom. Um, the biggest thing for us, and not even moms, just women in general, is just to take care of yourself. Um, you know, just as women, whether we are, you know, without children, 
um, with aunties. I mean, all of us, we make so many sacrifices for other people that we forget about ourselves because it's just who we are at, at the core. We are nurturers. Um, so just to remember that it's okay to say no. Yes. A lot of us, um, you know, we, we've been taught to be the, um, the good girl, the sweet girl, the accommodating girl, do not rock the boat um, girl. And we've carried that into adulthood with us. So it's okay to say no. Yeah. It doesn't, whatever the situation, if it's, if it feels out of alignment for you, it's all right to say no. And you don't need an excuse or reason as to why it was no. It just doesn't work for me. It's, it's no. You know, take care of yourself, do the bubble bath, sit and and, you know, just for us to start making rest a regular part of our lives and kind of learn to balance out the hustle mindset yeah. that it is OK for us to work hard, but it's OK for us to rest hard, too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I agree with that completely, because if you don't, your body will um, force you to, you know, do so. So. Um, you guys have heard, you know, me talk about my ailment and with rheumatoid arthritis and all of that. So, mm -hmm. you know, that was just something where, you know, my body was like, okay, you know, you don't want to rest. Well, it's going to start shutting down. So um, definitely, if you listen to some of the episodes, I'm definitely on the other side of that after about like three years. But um, it, it was something that I had to take um, in to consideration and then also moving around for three years um and bending or having my business with um a body that was just not able to function as everybody else's so you i had mm -hmm. to you know rest or else um my already not really functioning body was gonna really shut down so um learn rest before you know your body forces you to learn it so um yeah that's good give us your Instagram one more time and the website so that they can um, go ahead and shop with you. Absolutely. You can find me um, online, um, Jazzy Sweets and Eats, spelled out with J A S S Y and two S's in there. And I'm also on Instagram at Jazzy Sweets and Eats as well. Yeah, so thank you again for being on here. Hopefully we can see also some more stuff um, and, and talk offline about Enlightened Ladies because I definitely enjoyed, you know, what you had going on there. So, um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I've enjoyed our our, our chat here. It's been awesome. Yes. So I appreciate you um, bringing me on the show. For sure. Okay, so we'll see you guys next Friday um, back at 3.30 live again here at the good news network um but definitely follow us on instagram at new black history makers to stay up with what we have going on and then i always forget merchandise we're at the fox hills mall uplift us marketplace and then unloved la on Melrose. shop with us or go to newblackhistorymakers.com get you some merch um but yeah that's it and we'll see you guys next um Friday. without the power of god behind everything i do i really am completely inadequate <laughs> I'm helping the culture. These guys are these guys are part of us as well. You know, these guys are our, our cousin. I'm helping the culture. I'm I'm do, I'm pushing the culture forward in another way. Hey, black child, be what you can be. Learn what you must learn. Do what you can do, and tomorrow. <laughs>